guys. Let's move on. Mo Brooks, uh, let's put this one up there on the screen. So this one we talked a little bit about, which was the Alabama Senate GOP. And actually, it looks like it's going to a runoff here because Katie Britt, who was the Trump-endorsed candidate, she was the, what was it, the chief of staff to Senator Richard Shelby, yes, the seat that right. they're replacing, uh, garnered 45% of the vote. Mo Brooks and Mike Durant splitting the rest of it. Mo coming in 29%, Mike Durant at 23 So I don't know, Crystal. I mean, I'm curious what your thoughts are. It's obviously going to go to a runoff. She did come awful close at 45, but clearly there were enough people who voted for Mike Durant who apparently was um, having a, kind of a switch off with yes. Mo Brooks. Mm -hmm. There's enough people, uh, clearly over 50, a constituency who might be willing to back Mo Brooks over Katie uh, Katie Britt, which would also be a big rebuke to Trump, given that he went so far as to call Mo Brooks woke but, uh, for saying we need to move on from the 2020 yeah, election. The, the worst smear possible yeah. of any uh, anyone coming from the right. Yeah, I mean, uh, as you said, it seemed like the two of them, Mo Brooks and Durant, were kind of sharing the same pool of voters. So if you add their totals together, you have 52%, Britt was at 45%. I could see him pulling it off. I think so, too. Um, especially, yeah, that's possible. I, I almost feel like uh, during the, this primary, Trump has continued to be outspoken and kind of slamming Mo Brooks. I wonder if he's going to kind of back off at this point, not say a lot about this thing. Maybe that gives Brooks a chance to to rise and, and collect not just the votes from Durant, but also eat a little bit into Katie Britt's lead, he, lead here. I would still say, obviously, because she pulled in so many more voters than he did during the initial primary, that she would certainly be the favorite. But he looked like he was dead. I mean, that's why Trump pulled his endorsement in spite of whatever he had to say about, like, stop the steal mm -hmm. and, oh, he went woke. The real problem was he saw Brooks falling in the polls and it looked like he was going to end up in third place and then come close to making a runoff. So this is a bit of a comeback for Bo Brooks and, as you said, a bit of a humiliation for Trump. And I also think, look, with the learnings of Georgia and the fact that Trump doesn't appear quite as formidable and scary as he once did. You may also see some more fundraising and, uh, you know, sort of GOP figures rallying to Mo Brooks' side. That could give him some support here as well as he goes into the runoff. The runoff time period, I think, is relatively short. Yeah, it's isn't quite it? short. Uh, I think it's a couple of weeks. I was just actually reading about it. But, you know, whenever you think about what Alabama, it's difficult to say because obviously there is the poll, but she came so close that all she has to do is peel off 6% of Mike Durant voters and then she can go ahead and pull herself right. at mm -hmm. 51 and yep. win the runoff. So if that's the case, then obviously Mo Brooks literally needs almost all of the people who voted for Durant to come to his side. That certainly could happen. I mean, you don't vote for Durant or for Mo Brooks unless you're dissatisfied with Katie Britt and generally in a kind of more of an anti-establishment, and that even includes Alabama Republican establishment type Republican. So Mo Brooks had that interesting moment here uh, that we covered on the show about revealing the corruption in the congressional system, and he does seem to have some sort of like appeal on that front in terms of I'm the actual conservative in the race. You have people like Ted Cruz and Jeff Sessions, or sorry, Ted Cruz and uh, Rand Paul coming in and stumping the state for him. So he's got kind of the rabble rousers in the is Senate. Kind of a, she's kind of the chamber of commerce. She's the Mitch McConnell candidate, candidate for and, sure. You know, yeah. I mean, that's not a good thing to be whenever you're in the Alabama Republican primary. But, you know, uh, Tommy Tuberville did destroy Jeff Sessions purely based upon Trump's backing. And Jeff, True. So, I mean, he represented that state for what, like 30 years or something like yeah, that? And true. they still kicked him and out. And was the original. Yeah. I mean, he was sort of Trump the, before he made Trump. 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 Yeah. yeah. I mean, he he the Sessions endorsement was a landmark political event at the time. A lot of people don't even really remember it. But he was a sitting United States senator, not even just a congressman, who was like, I he put on the MAGA hat. You know what I mean? He sent Sessions down to Mexico, I remember, at well, one his point. His politics, yeah. his, his political views yeah. were in a lot of ways the kind of roadmap yeah. for what was Trumpism before Trumpism just devolved into conspiracy nonsense. Yeah, before Stop the Steal. Cable news is ripping us apart, dividing the country, making it impossible to function as a society, and making it impossible to know just what is true and what is false. But the good news is they are failing and they know it. 
That is why we're building something new, a new mainstream, a healthier one, something more trustworthy, something that we are going to need in one of the most pivotal times in American history. We are building up here for the midterms, for the upcoming presidential election, but we need your help. So if you can help us out by becoming a premium member today at breakingpoints.com, we're trying to change America for the better and the entire world. So what are you waiting for, guys? Go to breakingpoints.com and sign up and help us build a new mainstream.